taking a stance on abortion. You can't find it on any of these sermons. I cannot. And it's like, who are you addressing? Honestly, are you just addressing people that all need, you know, self-help books? Is that all we're doing? Mm -hmm. That's that's what it seems sermons are like. Because it's like this lack of addressing the actual issues in the world just irritates the crap out of me. Welcome back to another episode of PPK. Boys are back in town. Actually, we never really left town. Um, no. I'm leaving town soon. Yeah, though. exactly. <laughs> the boys are in town while we prepare for Miko to leave town. So um, now I was thinking that tune hasn't really got old yet. No, I'm. Really we might have to ask our our viewers though if it's gotten old yet, because <laughs> that's probably more important. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe you guys possible. can comment. I mean, it's it not, might be time to refresh. I don't know, but. Um, Every time you put it on, I'm like, all right, here we go. Uh, I'm feeling it. Yeah, we believe in tradition over here. It's okay. Mm-hmm. We gotta ah, it. That's a, a nice little segue on to uh, uh, today's topic. topic. Yeah. Well, you clicked on the video, so you know what the title is. It's a little Instagram faith vibes. Um, so it's really just a little observation <laughs> from your boy here and just kind of seeing the popular culture of Christianity, which I think is like extremely prevalent like i don't think there's no one saying like professing faith in christ or anything like that i mean you see like every athlete who's ever gotten an offer say give glory to god or all this stuff right anytime you get drafted you see it so it's not necessarily like god's not there but it's like the monitorous way of using god in a different way that he's not really meant to be or using jesus christ or in the bible as a way that he's not necessarily supposed to be And so there's a lot of that. And so I kind of want to speak to that because I'm thinking there's so many, right, of these Instagram faith. There's the Steph Curry's, Mr. Mr. Christian guy. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to side with Nike because they won't let me put a Bible verse on my shoes, all this kind of stuff where it's like you think he's with us, but he's really not. And it becomes really an Instagram faith. Like, I'm, I don't think he, I don't even think he goes to Pastor Todd. We always talk about Pastor Todd, but Pastor Todd doesn't even see Steph (laughs) on Sundays. And then you have Justin Bieber, who is just premier. I mean, I actually have a post I wanted to read to kind of like set this set this topic up. And he says, hard to see Jesus for who he truly is with religion blinding you. Let go of your religion and fall in love with who he is. Mm. So there's a lot of, I think, just this idea that Christ is, is it's not even the privileged way even. It's like, it's just kind of our way. And, you know, you can believe in them, but I mean, I guess if you believe in them, then you're saved, but then you don't really have to do anything to do that. And he's kind of just something that you can use when it sounds good. And when things are going well, you can give glory to him. You know, you're not giving glory to him. You just accomplished a lot. And then you're saying, hey, thanks, God, appreciate it for all that you gave me Mm -hmm. because now I make millions or now I'm my athletic ability is better than 99% of the world or whatever it is. And so I think just that form, because that's, that Instagram faith is what 90% of a society sees, right? They're not seeing the Catholics. They have no idea what Latin mass is or why people are mad about it or what Pope Francis says. They have no clue what that means. Any of it does. They don't really care. But what they do see are these type of Christians on social media. Mm -hmm. And so their view of Christianity now is at the point where, because for so long we were intolerant, but now we're super tolerant. And so now we just see this abuse really of it, right? I mean, like, you know, for instance, you go like Forever Twenty One. They have a they have a verse on their bags. I don't know how where they stand. I, I'd assume it's not super biblical or Christian. Um, In and Out has stuff on there. So it's like once again, we're not. It's not like this. This world is deprived of of Christian imagery or verses or stuff like that. But what it is is like becoming twisted mm. and to a point where how many people are now misled because of these so called Christians with their Instagram faith and now feeling like. You're giving no one any sort of convictions. You're convicting no one of any actual truths. Instead, it's this kind of idea where like a little verse hit you from King Arthur James Luke's version of the Bible, whatever it is, and then you share that and then that's it. So then it just becomes watered down, right? We're so used to seeing it without that same conviction, without people dying for the faith that we used to in the early church and stuff like that. So I just feel like that overall effect has completely twisted people and obviously it's the work of modernism stuff that we talked about, but that's prevalent. And I think also on the, I guess on the back end of that, 
kind of how much more does that mean that we have to do right as Catholics, as traditional Catholics to show what Christianity actually is and how we have to be a presence on social media or in public or whatever platform we're given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, um, the kind of the sola fide, the, you know, all you need is this, is the belief in, in Jesus Christ, your personal relationship. It's all about, you know, um, your, your, you and God. And it's like your faith should be to the point where we, we hope maybe your life will change, but like, it's not, let's not talk about that too much. Cause that's, you know, then people are going to get a little offended and turn away. So, you know, all you got to do, you know, leave your religion, just find Jesus Christ, which is like, I don't know where you're going to find him, <laughs> but go ahead and find him. And, and when you do, that's it. Just continue to fall in love with him. But there's like, it, it's so far away from the depth of, of who Jesus really is. That is like, what are you really, what are you giving people? Mm-hmm. Because they, you know, nowadays you look on TikTok, you look on Instagram. I'm so glad I haven't, I haven't bit the bullet yet of going on TikTok yet. Don't do it. But. China. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you see now that it's becoming new agey. Like Jesus is like making his way into this new agey to where it's oh, like, yeah. you know, my relationship with God is, is equal to my relationship in nature and with these stones that are healing and it's all on the same wavelength, right? He's, Jesus is just another uh, figure, you know? And it's, it's like, well, this is why we have religion to say, you know, that's, it's heretical, you know? And so that's the one thing that's most prevalent, Meeks, when you're talking about, you think of Justin Bieber, you think of Steph, you think of, you know, any of athlete or celebrity who proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but there's no actual life change and we're not sitting here judging them because we may not know what their prayer life is or you know if they are going to pastor todd on sunday we don't know but we can judge a tree by its fruits Mm -hmm. right and and so what we're trying to say is what has that pop culture christianity that instagram faith done for the faithful and the non-faithful at large what are we seeing as an effect of that? And what I'm, what if I were to give like a general summary of how the faith has turned, it's turned closer and closer to new age spirituality and modernism to where now they're, it's gotten so tolerant, like you were saying, Meeks, that now no one even knows what to believe. Supposedly mm-hmm. tolerant. Yeah. And you think of Jesus as the unifying truth, right? He stood before Pontius Pilate, you know, when asked and he's like yes like, you know, i'm the truth i'm the way mm-hmm. and i think we've gotten far away from that to where he's just a person in an emotion and like whatever and we talked about this in the modernist episode but it's like whatever you want him to be that's what he is and do away from your religion who's probably going to guide you and enlighten you through 2000 years of uh, tradition and church fathers and saints, but do do away with that so that you can embrace who he is for you. And I just think it's, it's become more and more dangerous. And the general summary is, are we seeing good fruits from this Instagram faith? Yeah. I think one of the things that comes to mind and let's make sure we're clear, right? That we're there. There are very faithful, um, Christians from a pro when we think Protestant. So I think there are some people that are uh, all up in the scripture, go to, go to their service every Sunday, live a, a, a try to live a virtuous, holy life for sure. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about those people. Uh, we want to talk to you about coming to the, the fullness of faith, right? But we're not talking about the ones who actually their lives are congruent with the faith that they profess, that they have a personal relationship with Jesus, that they, that their actions, their words, their thoughts, how they live, how they treat people, that if you went on their Instagram, you would not question whether or not they were Christian. Right. Where there's other people that you jump on Instagram and you'd be like, this dude's Christian. Right. Everything about it is something that's of the world or derogatory, objectifying, uh, you know, other people cursing, whatever it may be. There's an incongruency there. So let's take those people aside. What we're talking about is just what we what, what, what you brought up Meeks, on some of the I think of uh, Pastor Rich Wilkerson, the one who married Kanye and Kim. Right. The one who decided that at that point he was going to marry them. He was going to wear a cope and a stole because that looked good for pictures um probably doesn't even know what that is but if you don't know what that is those are vestments within the catholic church um so they was good enough to wear to you know for the photo op with kanye and and kim but one of the things he said about the gospel 
is, um, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like the gospel is not about modified behavior. And you can just leave it right there. There's a whole bunch of other stuff to that, but it's not about modified behavior because why would it be right? Cause Jesus said, you know what? Come follow me on the way and the truth of life, but do whatever you want. That's what he said. He didn't say anything about, I'm going to separate the sheep and the goat. He didn't say, I didn't come to bring peace, but the sword, right? Whoever loves his father and mother more than me is not fit to be my disciple. You know, I came to bring the sword. He didn't say any of that. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't crack any whips and flip over the tables when they saw, when he saw that they were turning his father's house into a den of thieves, into a marketplace. But you have this stuff who have a whole bunch of followers who are supposedly Christian, who their life only witnesses to so much heresy, so much incongruency with the way that Christ. Uh, guess what? God made male and female, for instance. God, for instance, instituted marriage and what God put together, let no man put asunder. Wait, those are God's words speaking. But what does what, what these folks come at? Well, I don't know, man. Then Jesus just becomes another good dude. He's just another Buddha. He's just another Gandhi. Right? He's just another whomever, a fill in whatever you know, pagan God you have today. And that's why when people say, when I'm spiritual, what do they mean? Hey, just, just leave me alone, don't judge me. It's really what it comes, came to mean. And when we say we're Catholic, we're making a statement now. We've got some cuckoo Catholics out there too, right? Who, aren't, who are also um, leading people astray, who, who are teaching against what the church has always taught and what Jesus has always taught. So it's not like the Catholics are free from this as well. And it's actually, to me, more scandalous because you are the church that Jesus Christ started. Meeks? Yeah, I, I'm just sitting here pondering about looking through all of the Instagram videos I've seen of uh, Stephen Furtick or Chad Veach or Rich Wilkerson and some of these guys. And it's just so tough because, like, I think one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this is because, like, I just don't – you got to be careful, and you can't fall into the Instagram faith as well because I feel like that's a lot of what Catholic Church, it seems like it's becoming. Because if you think about it, like, for Stephen Furtick, I, <laughs> I'm really just so fascinated with him as an individual, and you guys can look at his videos because, um, you know, it's, it's a show. It's, it really is a show. But everything he feeds off of is essentially – the, the crowd's response or their congregation's response and it's that mm, or you know alleluia or amen or that stuff that's that's all he's looking for because in his mind that justifies right like i i gave them something they're convicted mm. and unfortunately I, it almost is like that's what it, it seems like a lot of our mass has become it's this whole i'm feed the priest is feeding off right i i like to respond like we talked about novus ordo mass um not being done properly and things like that to where it seems like we're kind of falling in that trap. It's mm -hmm. the whole Protestant mm -hmm. trap around. Um, and we talked about Francis Chen, who was so distraught at the idea that they replaced the Eucharist with a man, with a pulpit. Yeah. And as someone who all he does is preach, and he is literally the center of whatever service. And so I just, it's just interesting to reflect on that and just try to understand like these people are almost like, it's just, it's like views. It's, for us, you know, we put clips. I put clips of Fulci on Instagram or clips of us. But it's discussing a topic in which we're trying to reveal some truth, right? We're not here. I'm not trying to do like a rhyme scheme or a haiku that sounds really awesome in order for me to like make sure that 15 seconds hits you where you need it for today, right? And um, so it just seems like a lot of it's, and we're not here to like either just like, I don't know, disprove all of these Protestant claims and stuff. That's not really... I mean, why would we need to do that? You so many apologetics will do it better than us. But I think just, I don't know, me trying to <clears throat> just reflect and be like, how many of those people see that and what, and kind of what is their response? Because I think that's all, I think that's all that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And I see it so often with like all these people and what Kimmy is saying, like, and what my dad was saying is literally that Jesus is just another figure and that's it. Because you can't say like, okay, I have another one. Let's, you know, let's start another one from my boy here, Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans. And he says, I hear people say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And they are absolutely right. Salvation is through faith alone and Christ alone. Insane theology. And we don't got to get into that. But then he goes on, but you don't have to go home to be married, but stay away long enough and relationship will be affected. Yeah, last part's true, obviously. But it's just like, 
what are you convicting people of, right? And I think we have to be aware of that in our conversations. Like I'm, I try to be, I'm a lot more mindful of it now. Like when I'm saying something, if I just use words, it's like, oh, for me, or I think personally, all those things, I'm no longer convicting that person. I'm mm-hmm. no longer actually saying truth. And so for this person, it's who's a, an obvious, I looked at his account or stuff and like this Protestant pastor reposted him on a story. So all these people who are paid pretty handsomely because i've seen a lot of pastors have literally three thousand dollar outfits with shoes and all that kind of stuff insane so people are giving them money all day and then they go out and how they evangelize people is just don't worry you don't have to go to church to be a christian all you have to do is believe so then like where's the conviction and change your life do what the gospels actually told because you know they tell us that we preach a false gospel or whatever it is Mm -hmm. so instead of pointing people to the actual truth Instead, what we're going to do is use him for, I guess, I don't I, use them for social, use Jesus for just social justice, use Jesus for whatever plan, use Jesus for Medicare for all, use Jesus for whatever politician, use Jesus all the time. Joe Biden's going to use Jesus whenever it's convenient. So we're just using him for his, for his convenience mm-hmm. because we can reach a certain amount of people, right? America is still a pretty, a pretty faithful, pretty Christian, quote unquote, uh, country so then as long as we say that for our convenience and we know that we can get some people rally behind us because we'll support that or whatever it is mm-hmm. and i don't necessarily know where i'm going with this but i just know that it's just like that it's just what i'm continually seeing and i think there's just got to be a point when we got to start saying things that, some real truths that are that are harsh things that are going to be real things that actually convict people and like when we have conversations with people understanding how we choose our words and where it's going to be like, Hey, you know what? I disagree with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, some of that stuff. So I don't know. It's just like, if you guys look through some of these, uh, some of these, I don't know, they're influencers more than, than Christians, but some of these people like almost like dissect those and then ask yourself some of those big questions. Like, what do, what do I believe? And what does this mean? Like, you know what I mean? And so, and then also like, I think just traditional this whole traditional movement versus charismatic movement, like we see a lot of that charismatic movement reflected in the same stuff. So if you're kind of looking like these people, right. And we're, we're in it for the views and, and vibes and all this kind of stuff. Like you're in it for the wrong reasons and you have to understand the depth. Right. So I even, I see that too, like as for the, the viewers, the followers of these pastors, you know, I see a lot of my friends, people I follow who will put these, these pastors on their story. And that's all it becomes. It's like, I'm just going to put it on my story because, you know, I've been feeling really down and out. My life hasn't changed, right? There's a perfect example. So I'm going to look to these pastors just for a little pick me up, that emotional high, that, that motivation speech, but like, that's it. And I'll maybe check him out tomorrow and post it on my story again. Or people do that with people been doing that in Facebook, MySpace days of putting like just a a Bible verse. That's it. But like, at some point, like you're saying, Meeks, it has to get to the point where it's yes, that to a certain point, those motivations, those 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 are good words to maybe counteract some negative emotions you might be having. But if it only stops at the emotional level, it doesn't start to work its way up into your intellect and start to work up into the, the exercise of your will and your daily choices, then what does it really do? It's fruitless, you know? And, and so I think that's where the faithful and I don't know if you call them faithful, just that those who are trying to either have some sort of Christian following or influence or, you know, have people that they look to that's not just the mainstream. They're looking at these pastors for some sort of influence, which is, I guess it could be worse, but it, it becomes simply a, a motivational speech. It becomes simply a, I mean, they might as well read a horoscope because what difference is, is it? Yeah. You know, it's just, it, they're putting it there. Um, on their story for their own kind of emotional, they feel good about it. And I think we're missing the part where it's like, okay, listen to that motivational speech, right? You listen to all those pastors, they're talented speakers, right? They hit you with the message or hitting all these metaphors and it sounds really cool and they, mm, amen, right? But like, now what, mm-hmm. right? Our emotions, you know, we're on fire, but like if, if they took the next step and say, now your life needs to change because Jesus literally laid down his life for you. Right. There, he, there was a call that he said he didn't say, you know, just believe in me and go to the world and you guys are going to be rich and prosperous. No, he said, take what one sack and just the tunic you have on your back and 
you, all you need to bring is the sandals and, you know, whatever they feed you is what you're going to eat. And if they don't bless you, then you leave. You know, that's what he told them. Yeah. He didn't say, you know, find the, the richest carriage or whatever they drove back to, back in the day. It's, it was just like a humble, life-changing message. And I think that we've forgotten that. And, you know, when we talk about this Instagram faith, and I was reading an article that Just Red Pill sent me. Shout out Just Red Pills because he's the GOAT. But he sent me an article about even within the Catholic sphere and why aren't we from the hierarchy down to the lay person preaching to non-Catholics in a way that is convicting now, like it has been for the past 1900 years, you know, because in the past hundred years, it's been very interreligious dialogue. It's been very, um, you know, let's, let's all just discuss and, and think about the Vatican council. We're going to have Protestant people involved and we'll discuss it. But w- Think about what, what Peter did in Acts. He said, repent and be baptized. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys need to change your life. Think about what St. Paul says to the Romans. Like, you guys are living in filth. Like, change your life. You know, and that's what these, the apostles did, is they, they don't go out there and say, you know, here's Jesus Christ, you gotta, you, you believe and, 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 and join our club, right? Like you could have the pagan club, but Jesus' club is really cool, right? No, it's like, repent. You, your lives are leading you to damnation. Right. And like, th- this is the only way. And I think we're missing that conviction. Like me saying, what, what are you convicting? If you're saying, no, you don't need church. You just need your idea of God. Yeah. I mean, you're essentially, rather than worshiping the Trinity, you're worshiping the Trinity, right? Me, myself, and I, I decide I'm God, I'm the Pope, I'm the whatever. Going back to what you were saying though, Meeks, uh, you know, the, the quote that you read about, you don't need to go to church. And I, it, I, I just had to bring up scripture since we were on, on the point just to, you know, put some things in the context because some people, maybe they don't read scripture, but they listen to this. They're like, what's wrong with that? He's, you know, it's a powerful message. But it's like Jesus tells us in Matthew eighteen fifteen, if you are taking notes, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take two or one or two others along with you that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Tax collector, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is right after Matthew 16, where Jesus gave key, Peter the kingdom, keys to the kingdom of heaven. And, of course, people are going, well, John, that's a small C church, man. Right? Because that's whenever we're two or three gathered. Oh, which he says right there in... Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. But then why wouldn't that count in when he says, bring one or two others with you? There's three of them there. And if he still doesn't listen to you, what comes after? Tell it to the church. And so this idea that mm, church religion's bad, Jesus good, then you don't understand your Christian history. You don't understand church history. You don't understand that back in the day, the first, the second, third century, people like St. Irenaeus, Irenaeus, who would, against heresies, would say, look, I'm a student of Polycarp, and he's a student of the beloved John. What's your pedigree? What's your background? Who do you follow? Because I follow Jesus in the church he followed, and here's my pedigree. Here's I'm bona fide, certified apostle. And what are we going to say? No, nah, man, I'm a 20th, 21st century pastor. What? What are you talking about? And so it's not like we're, tr- we're trying to slight anybody, but I think what we're trying to say is get beyond this superficial faith that all you need to do is put a little verse or, or, or post a little scene next to a church or say, all, all glory to God, but your life does not even speak to that. When everyone else from the outside looks at you and says, fool, you're a pagan. You're a hedonistic person. All you care about is partying or, or smoking out or uh, saying F this or F that. The music that you listen to, the movies that you watch are degradating, that they offend God 100% of the time. But because I say, oh, for the glory of God, man, that somehow makes you a good Christian. And Jesus says in Matthew 7, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's just like this whole dichotomy of and again we're all there i i was there i was a wayward son so i'm speaking from experience but when are we gonna when is enough enough mm-hmm. when are we gonna say this whole 15 second story of you pretending to be or acting like or when it's convenient jesus isn't an accessory he is the lord and king of the universe and i think of once we get to that point of saying jesus is it's like the you know one of the reflections that i had just this friday i said jesus is either lord of your life or he's lord of no- nothing He's either Lord of everything or nothing. 
You don't, Jesus is either, what is it? Is it uh, C.S. Lewis? Is either a liar or a lunatic. You don't get to have, oh, he's a nice dude. No, he's not a nice dude. He said he was Lord. So it's like this whole media of where we just go, man, let me put my filters on. I want you to just think I'm a good dude, right? Don't judge me. Don't be critical. Don't say that Jesus is the preferred way, you know, or don't say that. No, actually, Jesus said nobody comes to the father except through me. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He didn't say only if you want to, but we're so scared about division. Yet Jesus says what? I came to bring not peace, but the sword and that he will divide homes if you put him first. Yeah, it's funny because. I figured I've, I've I've heard a lot of Protestant pastors and little videos. I don't see why I just have I, I get interested into this that kind of stuff, but like almost have something similar, right, to that kind of level of passion and conviction. Yet it just becomes deteriorated because all you need to do is believe in Jesus, and that's it. Or you don't have to come to church, mm-hmm. or maybe just try come our you know try to come to our church, but don't come to this church. So this whole like even even if you do truly believe what they have to say. How can you follow it out? How can you really follow through with that lifestyle throughout of it without seeing the holes into it? I mean, at that point, then it just becomes like, once again, like an emotional ride for the rest of your life, essentially. And I'd say the thing that makes me most irritated probably about Instagram faith, and I think have not, it's not just Protestants, but Catholics and a lot of people or non-denominational, whatever, all these people is just this like, and like when Kenny was talking about, when you put that pastor on your story, it's almost like, because I've done this, I felt like this too. Okay, I've done my job, right? Like I, I evangelized because I showed, I'm a witness. I put this on my story. But what, what you're doing is, this isn't harsh enough, but at the same time, it does show that, you know, I follow Jesus. So I'm going to put that. Because that's where I feel like all, all those videos that they put out, let's make sure I don't, I don't offend somebody or make sure that, but I, I still want them to know that, you know, Jesus Christ is king whatever it is. And like, I think that probably irritates me the most. Cause like I've looked on once again, a lot of these Protestant accounts and I'm just trying to look through, I just want to see one video where someone says the truth about marriage. I just want to see one video. That's it. You guys all day long, you read scripture, you do this and that you follow Jesus Christ. I just want to see one video. I can't, I literally cannot find one. I don't know what, I don't know if you guys see any popular Protestants, but I have yet to see one today, at least back in the day, I'm sure. But you know, maybe some of these older guys, John MacArthur, or some of these older kind of Protestants, evangelicals. But the Instagram faith, like I just have yet to see. I've yet to see really anyone. Um, I know there's one that's really involved with March March for the Martyrs, um, mm-hmm. Hill Song guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think he's he does at least somewhat of a job. But just like taking a stance on abortion, you can't find it on any of these sermons. I cannot. And it's like, who are you addressing, honestly? Are you just addressing people that all need, you know, self-help books? Is that all we're doing? That's, mm-hmm. that's what it seems sermons are like. Because it's like this lack of addressing the actual issues in the world just irritates the crap out of me. Yeah. And just like, you know, thinking about the sex trafficking or what the porn industry and all this kind of stuff. And like, we're, they're just silent on it at all times. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are, right? So like, I, and I don't, oh man, I shouldn't be just calling out like specific names, but I'm just thinking like, you know, like Matt Marr, someone who we all really loved for a long time and just this pandering towards the agenda of the society and the war that uh, just basically this whole great reset kind of agenda that he's just pandering towards. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, we're so ready to say, I stand with these people, right? I stand with these people. But then when it comes to some of the things that are harsh, some people don't want to hear about the truth of the porn industry, or they want to hear about trafficking, or they want to hear about um, maybe some vaccines having, you know, aborted fetus stuff in there we don't want to hear about that we're not ready to stand up for those ones yeah. that's just too hard but these people over here who have been oppressed i'm i'm being you know I, i'm being charitable i'm being I, i'm the one that's standing because that's what jesus would do is that is it is it what you do or you just be like yeah, give to caesar what do to caesar <laughs> stop talking to me about your politics i don't care that's what i'm here for yeah. you know that's that's the that's the jewish idea of the of the political savior that's not the savior that that we follow and so that just irks me more than anything in the world because I'm like always looking for because because the truth is on, you know, on social media, we don't have a lot of those big time Catholic people that are really appealing in that way, in a social media way, in the aesthetically pleasing way, that way. Um, we don't have that. And so a lot of times I almost like look at some of these people and be like, wow, this is cool. These Some of these people, are, you know, they, they kind of look like me or they kind of act like me in a certain way. And then you're just hoping for someone to be an actual witness in that. 
mm-hmm. and it's so hard to find. And I mean, hopefully we'll be that eventually. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just a thing like that to me is the epitome of Instagram faith. Yeah. It's just like, let me go, let me see how far I can go, but I just don't want to hit this point. Yeah. And like for us practicing Catholics, you, you have to, like you, your duty is to, and if people are mad, dude, who cares? <laughs> you talk to six people probably regularly anyway. So you don't talk to all these other people. It doesn't matter if you see them at the store, literally they don't like you ignore them and all this stuff. And like that's something I've continually tried to just remember and be like, okay, am I offending someone with this story? Oh yeah, you're right. I am. Let's post it. Like if it, you have to do something, like there's got to be some sort because so many people need that. They really need something to, they, they need a witness. And there's, like I've said before, there's a lot of people who aren't even Catholic that told me they've watched, you know, some of my friends, just like, you know, some of my guys I grew up with and told me they watched it. And it's like, I know that they probably don't agree with almost like 85% of things that I have to believe in, but at least they respect me enough because I'm actually willing to say things that are truthful and not just pander. And I think that always means something. These other people, you're just going to keep scrolling. You know, the Archbishop Fulton Sheens, these people, those are going to make you stop and, and like question yourself a little bit. It's going to hit you right there. Not just be like, dang, that was fire. That was a good bar. Move on. It's going to be like, wow. And that's what we, ha- I think, uh, you know, all of us have a platform on social media. So I think we have a calling to do that. Mm-hmm. I think too, <clears throat> if we were to just pause and think about the Instagram faith at large, the, the, the pastor scene, that's so popular on social media, on IG stories, on whatever, is we've kind of forgotten what worship truly is. And and we're always talking about, you know, it's my relationship with God, it's my relationship with God, but what does God have to say about his relationship with you? Yeah. And it's what are we talking about with actually giving him what is due? All right? I think we talked about this either last episode or the, the episode before that actual justice is giving him what he's doing. We talk about social justice all day long, right? But what about justice to God, giving him what he deserves as our Lord and Savior, our creator, as the God of the universe? Like, what what does he deserve? And a sub-virtue of justice is religion. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and Justin Bieber is not going to preach that because he has no clue. And I think we're missing that part to where, you know, Father Mike Schmitz in one of his, um, his homilies, it was years ago, but he talked about when, when he gave um, his mom a present, she said, all I want you to do is, is like, I think she said, like, I think it's like clean the house. I just want you to clean the house and make a dinner or something. He's like, no, mom, I learned this super good, tr- this super cool trick on the bike. It's going to be awesome, right? He's like, I, I just want you to clean the house. And he's like, no, but this trick is going to be awesome, right? And he did the trick and she, she loved him for it, but that wasn't what mom wanted. Yeah. It was what father Mike wanted as a kid. And that's what we're doing every single day with every post, with every sermon, with every service. Are we doing what God wants or are we doing what we want? And I think that's what we're getting lost in. Think about these people who are saying it's gone so far away to replacing the Eucharist with the pulpit, right? That it's gotten, it's keep going farther and farther to where now you don't even need a church. It used to be, no, no, still come to church. Just come see me because I'm going to make money. I can tell you about the prosperity gospel. I can tell you about Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to throw scripture. I'm going to have the most fire motivational speech using some scripture verses, and I'm going to make some money, and this is pretty cool, right? I'm still a, a on-fire believer, but it's a little distorted, right? Because where's Jesus in it now? Where's the offering offering of the the Paschal sacrifice, mm. offering of the lamb, right? But now it's gone even further away to where, you know what? We don't even need a church at all. It's whatever's in your heart. And like, what's the next step now? You don't even need Jesus, right? We're like, where does this end? And it's like, how about we stop for a second and start to reel back where what we have lost? Mm. And it's like, if you see the stages here and you actually reflect, we're not going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So how about we scale back and go to what has been true? for and consistent throughout all the tradition. And there's only one church that has maintained that. And so I think in that simple reflection, you can listen to these pastors all you want. There's probably some good in them. You can listen to, you know, you can read scripture 100%. And those are all good things. But at the end of the day, when you are worshiping, are you giving God what he is due? Are you giving God what you think he wants, which is really what we want, right? We want to feel good. We want the, we want the guitar we want the smoke. We want the stage. We want all our friends and the beach balls flying over. That's what we want because we're human and we're sensual beings. But like, what does God want? And when you think about the mass, it's, it's not what we want a lot of the time. 
but the I don't know where if it's in the the Roman Missal, but or if, if it's just a priest that we've heard, I don't know. But the only the only proper offering to God that is worthy of his of his praise is himself. Right. There's nothing we can do. Which is the Holy Eucharist. Yeah, which is the Eucharist. Yeah. We're literally, think about the Latin Mass in the most beautiful way. The priest is literally lifting up the host to God himself, saying, there is nothing on earth, Lord, that we could give you that's even close to worthy. So all we can do is represent the sacrifice that you did for us, and we're going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Think about that in the context of this Instagram faith. We've gone so far away. All it is now is, no, no, you sit in your home. In the comfort, you got your coffee and your Bible open, but just listen to my speech about faith, hope, and love and everything else that's, you know, you can find at Hobby Lobby, you know, just listen, just, just sit there and, and, and then go about your day because you believe in Jesus Christ. And it's like, again, where is this trend going? And I'm afraid that it's, let's start with G, the church. We don't need the church anymore. And sooner or later, we're already seeing, right? We don't need Jesus. We need the horoscopes. We need the stones. We need the sage. We need that's no, no. You don't the need crystals, Jesus. Yeah. You need the crystals. And now it's new age, and we're getting further and further to where, if we're not careful, that will become the new norm. It's already there. You can see it all all up in the society, right? That we've uh, regulated our faith to something spiritual, which is really diabolical mm-hmm. in in this world. That you've got portals all day long from these pagan idols, um, and. You know, there's going to be a price to pay for that because Jesus himself um, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's it. He is the only way. Um, and so, again, not to say for, uh, you know, our our uh, Protestant brothers and non-denominational brothers and sisters, our Eastern Orthodox brothers out there, that um, you may not have the faith. But I think we this should cause us to pause for those on the Instagram side of things or the social media side of things. If your faith is only as good as your scroll, you're tripping. You're doing it wrong. Meeks. Yeah, I'd say kind of to wrap wrap up, um, I think what the, well, what this is, modernism, just kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, Relativism, modernism. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah. its thing right now. I think the way to fight that is to, like, I think all Christians, let's look back at the people closest to Jesus, right? And, um, Father, could you tell when the Bible was, was created? What, what year that was or century yeah, it was in the fourth century so uh i want to say it was 380 the year 380 so would that mean if i may that we did 300 years of of uh right worship following jesus christ without the bible is that yeah the, yeah that okay. would imply that okay. the, the the church was operating up and e- running up and running evangelizing not, for 300 and it wasn't it wasn't sola scriptura but what did we have because we didn't have the bible could you tell them that <laughs> what we had <laughs> that would be called tradition that would be called tradition yeah apostolic so if tradition. we could look back right and so let's i think that this is how you fight modernism is you go back you say okay what are the people closest to jesus say yeah. right and so like you were saying when people were out there just preaching nonsense in cnn then it'd be like dude who are you <laughs> like i was just with my boy paul last week and he was saying none of that yeah and so that's where our church comes from, right? It didn't come from 1500 Martin Luther, all the stuff that's just diluted. And then now it got to the point because that initial, all you to do, right, is justify that first break off. And there's a lot of theology that goes into that, right? A lot of disagreements between those. But as soon as you justify that, you justify every other break off to the point where then Jesus is just a historical figure and that's it. Yeah. And so the way to really combat this is to consecrate Russia. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the way to, <laughs> the way to really come out of it, according to our lady. So. To, uh, the way to really come at this is just be like, okay, let's look back, right? Like Francis did, yeah. Francis Chen did. Like it, when we look back, it was like, oh, that is truly amazing. We were all circled around Jesus Christ and the Holy Eucharist. And he was amazed because he didn't know that. No one told him that. Yeah. And a lot of these people literally just don't know these things. Mm-hmm. And instead, the Catholic Church is just this cult and stuff like that. But I'm just thinking, like, how do you truly fix it? It's probably by, like, following the church fathers. It's probably following these Christians that were in 100, 200, 300. Yeah. That's how you do it. Because those are the people who truly understood, and they were handed down from the apostles, the tradition of what you're actually supposed to do. So I think Todd has some good stuff. Um, I think he's, you know, there's a lot of truth that can come out of there. But if you're really trying to follow Christ, I think that's probably the most accurate way to go about it. Yeah. Keone. 
Yeah, I mean, just to kind of piggyback off that, it's it's going back to the tradition. Listen, li- you know, looking at the what the church fathers have taught, because they're as you go deeper and deeper in history, they're closer and closer to the apostles who lived and dined and walked with Jesus Christ Himself. You know, so I think that's obviously huge, but I think it's on also, you know, starting tomorrow, it's that like you were saying, makes that bold reflection of are you willing to ruffle feathers? Because the 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 church and our society at large, we need that so much, is the ability to ruffle feathers, the willingness and to suffer persecution. Because if you're gonna lose some friends, you're gonna have people who are gonna, you know, slander you or whatever it is and that's okay because you at the end of the day who are you going to stand before at the end of the day jesus himself says what did you do for me did you pander or did you speak truth boldly and show them myself who is fullness of truth did you show them or did you show them what you wanted in your comfort in your own attachment in your own sin right and i think that's just an honest reflection of everything you're posting religious or not is it bringing the people actually closer to christ himself or is it just kind of you know pandering to their emotions so that's that's probably one thing that i would say but also it's it's in the in the catholic you know for the listeners here that are catholic it's it's an honest reflection of are you willing to die for your faith and that's myself included because i think if you read the stories of the saints and the martyrs who we think about convi- we talk about conviction Right. And, and nowadays it's 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 just for views. Right? It's just to get the the 500 to, you know, 2000 people in a, a big concert. And we feel really good until next Sunday. Right. But we talk we think about like the Catholic sphere right now for, for our listeners and for our, our, us. You know, are you willing to die for your faith? Because I, I you know, you read them and it's like, dude, I don't know if I could do it. You know, if if. And you think in the Middle East and in, in China and that real persecution where they can't yeah, even offer right ma- now, they can't even offer mass. People are getting killed for it. Priests are getting arrested. You know, like it's a real deal. Are you ready for that? Yeah. And how spoiled we can be to where all we have to do is still lay in bed, get our dopamine rush and our effeminate selves <laughs> and just listen, listen to all these posts and you feel good. Oh, Lord. Oh, you're so close. And God's like, what are you doing for me? Right. And so I I think it's that willingness to die, that conviction of like my life, like you said, it's like my life is yours, God. Yeah. Not my Instagram is yours. Not my stories are dedicated to you. My entire life is dedicated to you. And I think obviously we're all aspiring for that, but that's for the Catholic listeners. Let's not be just like those Instagram faith influencers that are, that are just, you know, we're just coddling you. You know, we do it obviously with, with true charity, with gentleness and meeting them where they at, but with the fire and conviction of what's in our heart. Cause that's when people say there's something different about Miko, right? There's something different about those PPK guys, you know, whoever it is, that's what we need. And I think, I think if, if we can do that as a collective unit, that's when people start to simply reflect. Mm-hmm. And that's what Fulton Sheen did. People were awestruck by it. Like, this man is so unafraid to speak the truth and he does it with such boldness. Like, what is it? He's got, he, he's either crazy or he's speaking some truth. Yeah. And that's what we need. Yeah. Especially in, during his time, right? He's speaking against communism mm-hmm. straight to the faces. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the part where we, we need to pray for the grace to be that bold um, to where we can be a, a faithful witness. Uh, and I would just leave on, um, and before I turn it back over to Meeks, the one of the the quotes I often like to refer back to when we talk about some of the church fathers, uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch, who um, was on his way to be martyred in Rome in one of his letters to the Smyrnans, had said, wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. You're talking martyred around 108, 110 AD. I believe he was ordained by St. Peter. So if I'm going to believe anybody... It ain't going to be Pastor Todd. Sorry, Pastor Todd. Um, yeah, Pastor Rich. Good guy. Yeah, yeah, good, good guy. guy. Whatever. You got some inspirational talks. I'm going to go back to somebody who was ordained by the first pope, by St. Peter himself, who said, wherever Jesus Christ is, there is also the Catholic Church. And so that's where I'm riding or dying with right there. Meeks. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Instagram faith, right? <laughs> What's this right here? That's our handle. So check us out. Um 
And I think if you're if you're gonna do it right, if you're gonna look on Instagram for your faith, have some have some real ones on there. Yeah. And not only us, like I always say, there's so many good there's so many good Catholic accounts out there. Um, follow them, support them. There's a lot of good, you know, do the harder things, our guy. Yeah. Um, Meta Virtue, Just Red Pills is a good account to follow. The if Catholic you're, if you're based. Yeah. <laughs> if you're based, you may not be <laughs> Catholic Will, um, Catholic Connect. There's so many things. And I think it's important because I felt like the more that I've started to like follow these accounts, take interest, then when your feed reflects that, it's almost like you can read it and be like, you know, that's a good thing. You can almost like reflect on it a little bit as opposed to just, you know, nonsense or whatever that may come up. Yeah. So I think it's a, it's definitely a good thing and it's it's a platform to evangelize. And there is a certain three guys that evangelize <laughs> on that platform right there. So check us out. All right, my peoples. Well, we appreciate you guys. Appreciate you all joining us on this episode as we kind of break open Instagram faith. Um, Again, shout out to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you, but we desire for you to come into the fullness of faith. So you know how we do it. We wanted you to pray for us as we continue to pray for you. And let's get after it this week. Get holy or die trying. Peace.